es arquitecto y urbanista, estudió en Princeton. ¿Tiene...? Eso, eso en California. ¿Eh? Eso en California. ¿Pasa? Sí, en California. Bueno, él tiene su estudio con, con su mujer, es Moonland Polisoides, en Pasadena, en California. Fue profesor también durante mucho tiempo, durante más de 20 años, creo, a, en la Universidad del, del Sur de California. Y eh, fue uno de los fundadores de, del Congreso para el Nuevo Urbanismo, del CNU, cual, en el cual pues, desarrolló una actividad muy importante en, en la defensa de, de un modelo de ciudad más, más humano. Thank you, Pablo, and thank you all for your. Uh for your invitation to be part of the jury, for inviting me for this uh, lecture, and for your presence here this morning. Yeah, that would be better, thank you. And for your presence here this morning. Um, in the, in the uh, best traditions of evangelism, I'm going to join you uh, and speak from, from, from here, not seated. Uh, because a lot, a lot of what has happened in the last 30 years in, in, in this field has had to do with advocacy and with stepping out and, and, and living uh, these ideas beyond the magnificent theoretical, um, theoretical positions and the writings that you heard, the, those, uh, those brilliant presentations of yesterday outlining. And, and uh, I want to make absolutely sure you understand that I'm going to be addressing today the issue of uh, practicing um, in uh, this moment of austerity, particularly by, uh, by stressing the idea of smallness, uh, which I think is something that is probably much, clo much closer to all of you. I notice I'm, I'm not talking to this group of people, I'm talking to this group of people, because uh, here I'm teaching to the choir. Uh, here I'm not uh, addressing the choir. Uh, I'm, I'm addressing uh, the angels that are coming in the, in the future. And, uh, I want, you, I want you to know that, that there is an enormous amount of hope, but this hope can only be reached, can only be realized uh, if you all understand what emotional commitments you have to make uh, to uh, direct yourself in the, in, in the best possible way towards uh, addressing and uh, undoing in many ways and then proceeding to reconstruct both the, the intellectual uh, the ideas universe in which we live, and the possibilities for action that exist within it. I think I have to change here. So I, I, I'm going to do two things today. I'm, I'm going to start with a, a, uh, a mild polemic that reminds us all, particularly us as your intellectual uh, parents, uh, of where we have led you up to this point as, as, as in generational terms and what choices you might have, and then I'm going to outline a, a number of possible projects that you might want to be engaged with. I have to push this hard, I think. This is not going to let me do it. Come on, come. You know what, I'm, go I'm going to stand up there, it's okay. You sure? No, no, it's okay, it's okay. Yeah, I'm going to stand and deliver it from here, don't worry. Thank you. Ahora sí que no funciona, en absoluto. So, um, we, we have submitted ourselves as a as an architectural culture, to a level of authority, the promise of our authority and the authority of the state uh, that, that mostly leads our efforts. Uh, in the promise somehow that through this authority we can, um, we can transcend common sense and, and, and realize uh, transformative uh, dreams. The fact is that uh, in order to do that, we have also adopted a theory for three generations now that is best articulated through uh, the, the, the works of Siam. This computer doesn't seem to like me very much. Does this work? Yeah. 
So uh, best articulates the work of Siam, and, and which in terms of, of urbanism, which I think is a fundamental point of departure for this, for this discussion, um, allowed us to destroy the, 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 the basis for, for living in cities and for designing cities that was, uh, that was centered on the public realm and on the ability of people to live in balance within this public realm. You can see the, the modern city against the scale of traditional cities, for instance. Um, it destroyed any sense of connection to memory, and I think even at this point in your education, you are asked to constantly forget what you know, forget where you come from, forget the, the inputs that your eyes and senses have received in order to somehow be transformed into a, into a being that will somehow generate ex novo in your lifetime a whole new way of looking at the world. So uh, the, the, whole, the whole typological and historical basis of, of human, human life and human practice sacrificed in the light of this, of this of this, uh, of this promise, and then the erasure of the difference between nature and the city, the, the division of, 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 of the world uh, into, into within walls and without walls disturbed here to such an extent that everything can exist everywhere and everything is residual. Uh, the solid and the void can exist in a, in a totally residual relationship. What have, we, what have we done to ourselves? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm still trying to, to control this. What have we done to ourselves? I'm going to end up sitting down in the end, you'll see. Uh, wh what we have done to, you, to ourselves in the process of doing this is that we have bought, we have, we have accepted, we have incorporated ourselves into a whole way of making places and also living in them. So part and parcel of accepting this theoretical position and living with it, with it part and parcel of both teaching it and practicing it is that we have made ourselves the slaves of the, of, the, of the proposition that architecture, which is figural and unique and one-off and dedicated to, to, to the fame of individual architects, is more important than the actual uh, wholeness of the city as a, as a, as a, as a reading of buildings uh, together with each other uh, being of, of some, some significant value. We have accepted the primacy of the automobile. We have accepted the fact that we live in a world which is based on, on, on a, on a, on a, on a, on a petroleum-based uh, 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 state of, of, uh, of inebriation in which we essentially have uh, traded away our ability to be with each other in compressed space in favor of, of, uh, of uh, either being stuck in traffic, moving at high speeds, or going from, from nowhere uh, to nowhere. We have accepted the idea that cities are, are, are carnival settings and not, and not uh, places where people of, of all kinds uh, can have all kinds of, of experiences. We've accepted the fact that our economic and political priorities have shifted away from making uh, sane, uh, sane urban uh, projects at significant scale, like the, very much the thing that that Ettore Mazzola showed yesterday in favor of taking all of this, all of this uh, money and throwing it at senseless infrastructural improvements, many of them having to be torn down uh, after 50 uh, or 60 years and, and rebuilt either in similar or different form. And finally, we've accepted the proposition that we live in a world dominated by suburbia in the English-speaking world and by slaburbia uh, in, the, in, the, in the European world, in the European world and maybe the Asian world as well as well, excuse me. <clears throat> so we have, we have accepted this new uh, uh, fundamentalism and this fundamentalism has resulted in 90 years of undoing the world on the basis that I just simply showed you. Now in Spain, in Spain that comes with, of all, of all other countries in the world, it comes with a particularly deep loss. And uh, I, for me, the, the, this culture, because the culture, architectural culture, in which I actually grew to be an architect within, not by studying here, but by visiting here, uh, very often, for 15 years, every summer. This culture, other than the Roman culture, is the most distinguished urbanist culture that the world has ever known. It built more than a, a thousand cities in, in, Central, in the Americas and in the rest of, of, of the empire, 
And it was not the act of, of, of building itself, which in itself is remarkable considering that most people arrived in, the, in this outer shores uh, with their underwear on essentially, without any means, and were able to conceptualize some of the greatest cities the world has ever seen. But the most important thing about it, the most important thing about it is that this process, which is often seen as a kind of imperial process of colonization or uh, an imperial process of imposition, if you wish, economic and political, is in effect also the most extraordinary, the most extraordinary export of Spanish architectural and urbanist culture and through it, through Spanish architectural and cultural life of all kinds. So, you heard, uh, I, I'm following up on, on remarkable lectures of yesterday, and I'm just simply, also through my work, I'm trying to, to, to put forth the proposition that that which we have done in the past can again be uh, uh, accomplished. For example, we talked yesterday about a, a coherent theory uh, incorporating a, a, a sense of, of, uh, of, of uh, beginning with, with urban structure, continuing with, uh, with typological structure of buildings and character of buildings, and ending up with a, a level of, of constructual integrity that realizes those kinds of, those kinds of, of places we all live. And, and the, 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 the series of buildings built by Spain in the colonies begins with, with, with uh, an enormously centralized and rationalized system of laws which uh, you would say, as in every bureau bureaucracy, is relatively stiff and unfriendly and, and, and imposing. But the most beautiful thing is there was no internet. It is applied all over the Indies in the most informal, beautifully uh, uh, in a subterranean, uh, meaning that people not obeying rules and doing things with, with rough tools, and in, in locally meaningful ways that make every one of, this, of the cities magnificent in, in, the, in their urban structure. It also incorporates a powerful sense of space. Many of these, many of these um, uh, this is, I think, a drawing from Panama, this, this incorporates a, a, powerful, a powerful sense about the organization of the public realm, and, and then, of course, understand cities in this integrated fashion in the long run, which is the one we should be aspiring to, where infrastructure, open space, landscape, buildings, and the way in which they find themselves in the larger context of nature are seen as being a series of layers that are interconnected entirely, as opposed to the, 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 the mechanical uh, analog of, of, of much of, of Siam urbanism. All of this is in, in this work. This public space, is, is, is magnificent in its, in its reach and its design. It reminds me, of course, that while we're fallen into the trap of signature buildings, the only things in our universe that have signatures are cities. And, and the, traditional, uh, the traditional urbanism we're talking about, as I'm going to illustrate in a moment, gives the signature quality to every place we've ever made, with the exception of anything we've ever done in the 20th century. So, so you have this very simple idea of buildings and open space existing, and by simply, in, in Quito, changing the topography and the, and the size of this place, the nature of the buildings, and you, you have a unique signature place or a unique signature set of streets. Every street of every one of these great uh, Spanish cities in South America is different than every other, although their ingredients are identical. Think about how amazing this is, you know, in anthropological terms in anthropomorphic terms as well. Similar ingredients, different final morphology, as opposed to the opposite happening. This is from one of my sketchbooks in Antigua, Guatemala. This is actually the set of public buildings inside, inside Antigua. An extraordinary array of public buildings is the capital of New Granada here. Never happened. Magnificent public buildings of magnificent local form. This is the Monastery de las Capuchinas in, in, in Guatemala City, composed in, with reference to the volcano behind it. And, and, and then magnificent public buildings also for administration, and all with, with dispositions, uh, typological dispositions, and character dispositions that are particular to, to, to this place, including squat columns as a response to earthquakes. And then an extravagant variety of, of uh, private space, organized mostly in, in, in Casas con Patio, of, of, of a singular typology which also has a constructive component, as you can see from, from the, the sketches to the right, 
and which gives this amazing character to street after street after street after street, all of which are similar but entirely different from each other. And then finally, to, to, to complete this argument, a, a, a sense of composition and construction that is made consistently, naturally, for every single one of, this, of these buildings to the point that as they fall down, as many of them did in the earthquake, and people are recovering some of the cities, in the case of Antigua, for instance, people can actually build right, right back up and directly. And it the language incorporates the most basic uh, and, and, the most, and the most poetic dimensions of, of this, uh, of the, of this of the settlements done uh, amazingly with a level of freedom and a level of, and a level of, of compositional clarity that, that speaks to the heart and makes these places instantly recognizable and inst instantly lovable. So this tradition, which is your tradition, is a tradition of all that you were about, all that your continent, uh, uh, part of the continent, your, your, your great peninsula is about, was really transferred there and accepting, accepting the canon of Siam has completely destroyed you as the representatives of one of the great constructive and, 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 the, great, um, and, and the great urbanist traditions the world has ever known. The true heirs to the Romans and before them to the Greeks. So the new urbanism to the rescue. I, I, you know, uh, uh, it is very difficult to speak in a very short period of time about the new urbanism. I will simply say, I will simply say that there are some Building upon the extraordinary work that, that uh, Leon has done and has evangelized over time, and Andres Duan and a few others, I would like to approach this from a slightly different point of view and tell you what are some of the most extraordinary design steps or more practical steps or more practical ingredients that one needs to, to understand one's work in terms of, in order to realize the kinds of environments we're talking about. And I think primarily, the work ought to be about a balance between buildings and, and networks and, 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 and infrastructure so that the, the, the infrastructure itself, the solid and the void, the void allows for interconnectivity of all kinds and particularly of interconnectivity be, uh, among and between different modes. So in the right of way, which incidentally has not been a de had not been a design subject matter between about 1930, about the depressed, beginning of the Depression and the, the, the Olympic work in Barcelona, the right-of-way is actually a kind of project. It's a kind of design challenge that, as you'll see in a moment, can be addressed as a project in itself. Space figuration is essential because you cannot be an architect and be thinking about making buildings well, without realizing that everything that you draw has a, a consequential relationship to the space surrounding it on all sides. So the solid and the void, from the largest to the, to the smallest increment, are related. It is terribly important to realize, from a sociological point of view, from your lives in Madrid, that compactness is the salt of life. You take this group of people and you push them 10 times this distance from each other, and there's no civilization. And you put these people into a single room, and you know, sparks happen. And you put these people in this relationship, and we have a formal exchange. And the fact is that distancing, that prejudices, compaction, is the essence of human life. Diversity is also a very important point because within every one of these pockets of, 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 of compaction, Witness Madrid, there's a level of change in, of, of all kinds, from use change to age change to material change to all kinds of understanding and, and, and physical flux that physical environments ought to be accommodating. And that, I think, is, is an absolutely extraordinarily important aspect of, 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 of building. And then the, the subject of frugality is one that I underline, not because of the, of the subject of this conference, but also because, also because we have been amazingly um, irresponsible in the last few generations in building freeways, in building market halls, in building opera houses, and doing this, this, and the other. Yesterday, in the evening, after at least three glasses of wine, we began to enumerate all the disastrous projects in Spain of the last 10 years. And we decided maybe that it was time to build a book called uh, Recent Spanish Disasters, because there are abandoned buildings 
major huge buildings abandoned or falling apart or incapable of being finished because no one has actually understood the relationship between why you're doing something and what you're expecting out of it. The essence of urbanism and architecture is intervening at various levels, with various levels of force and with very, various levels of investment, not for the sake of the object you're making, but for the sake of everything else. With reference to what you're expecting this thing to accomplish, not what it is. And finally, we all have to remember that one of the greatest calamities of Siam urbanism is that it erased the notion of urbanism. It is really large-scale architecture. If, if, if architecture is about the making of objects, urbanism is, is really the control and the, and the, and the design and the, and the, 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 the long-term uh, ca caring and forming of the void between buildings as the buildings themselves form them. So I don't think that for three generations there's been any serious mainstream discussion about the nature of the void. The void just simply does not exist. All that exists are objects. And this is self-fulfilling prophecy. The less you talk about, about the void, the more you, you destroy any sense of city. The, the, the city becomes a residual organism to, to this orgy of, 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 of singularity of, of buildings. And I, I, say, I, I, I show you this because I think it's a, it's a particularly important subject in that coding, particularly form-based coding, is a reminder that although all of us are intervening as architects and doing a lot of architectural work in our own urbanist project, in a purer world, we'll be doing just urbanism, setting up the rules and letting others do the work, the way, the way Lisbon was, was, was uh, reconstructed after the earthquake, the way all the great projects of the world happened with, with, with a clear differentiation between, between rule setting and executing. And the, the, the things that form-based codes do, just to, to remind you or for, for you to notice, is that it, it, they take away two important disastrous dimensions of, of, uh, of uh, conventional, uh, or conventional thinking. One is use-based zoning, isolated zoning per use, and the other one is uh, FAR, uh, uh, building proportional to, to uh, the, the amount of, of space allowable. Uh, for each block uh, compared to the amount of land that, the, that, that, that the, this amount of, of space sits on. And the reason why that is such a disastrous undertaking is because all of these are one FAR. So there is a tremendous ind indeterminacy in working through FAR because you can have a one-story building, a two-story building, and a four-story building, and you don't know what this, the form of the city is going to be. Um, if, if, you, if you do it this way. The city becomes, the, the, the solid parts of the city forgetting, uh, forgetting these monuments becomes completely un, uh, you know, unpredictable. And the alternative, the alternative to this, to from base coding, is the codifying of the form of the voids, the precise delineation of the, of the, of the workings and of the nature of the voids, and the precise delineation of the, of the typological choices for building types. So since the beginning of Western civilization when it comes to city making, since essentially um, uh, Camarina here, next, next slide Morgantina, these are Greek, Greek uh, uh, towns of expansion in Sicily, you see that the, the way in which territories are organized and cities are made is through the coding of streets the making of blocks, the lotting of blocks, and, and the beginning of constructing private dwellings and public, uh, and public buildings. And the balance between, between these, two thi these two things and the way in which they grow and they get managed over time becomes the essence of its settlement, the signature of its, of its settlement, settlement, not the signature of each building. And I, just, just before I show you some, some, some projects, these are the places where I've, been, where I've been in the last four months, talking about the signature of places. And this is the magnificent uh, drawing by Lanciani of, of, uh, of Rome as a palimpsest in four layers, one of the greatest drawings ever seen in the world. And, and here's Rome, and here's, uh, here are, are the spaces um, of its streets and, uh, and, its, and its piazzas. So the nature of the subdivision itself, the nature of the solid at the block scale, and at the lot scale, and the residual formed 
and useful public space between them is the actual signature of that settlement. When we say Rome, we, we are identifying it by these characteristics. And notice that when we say Quito, we have another diagram, another disposition of solids and voids, and a different kind of space based on the same ingredients. And when we say, and we say New York, Midtown, whether you like it or not is not the issue of this discussion, or do you prefer one kind of settlement to the other, but we have different kinds of streets and different kinds of voids, which can be designed by choice in particular places, and every one of them results in a different kind of place. It's miraculous, it's extraordinary, it's the most fecund way of thinking about urban design that we have ever thought about, and it's continuously unbroken, with the exception of the last 90 years, from now going backwards to Morgantina and Camarina. And this is Pasadena, of course, because I couldn't, I couldn't tell you I haven't been home for the last six months, but this is a suburban setting, and I did it on purpose, because there is no doubt where this is and what this is. This is the downtown of Pasadena, and this is residential neighborhoods. So what can we do? What can we do? Yesterday, we saw the extraordinary work that, that you showed, Alian, the, the, the great work that Ether showed, others showed. You can operate at a very large scale. And I don't want to dissuade you for operating at a large scale. You can think big, and you can most certainly fight big, because there's no question in my mind that in order to in order to get to the point where we are, in order to overcome the fundamentalism of the other side, which takes no prisoners, by the way, uh, I would suggest that, that thinking big and intervening big is important. But in this moment, particularly as a 21-year-old, a 25-year-old, a 30-year-old, with a great deal of uncertainty about where you're going, thinking small and acting small in a consequential way can also be rem remarkably important. So I'm going to show a few projects projects of street making which result in block types and block-based buildings that result in street types and the two integrated in all cases that actually give you some indications, some indications about possible areas for you to be engaged in. This actually is a project in, in the Southern California region where a train stop suddenly happens at the crossing between the gray and the black line, as you can see right there, right there. And this is an old, indu an old industrial district, about 80 acres, which gets torn down and turned into a, into a transit-oriented development, a, a mixed-use neighborhood around, around um, a station. And note, for instance, that, that this network, this new network, which defines, which defines the blocks that you see and the lots that are coming, is organized on the basis of a very simple set of, of right-of-way types dimensioned and expected to function from a transportation point of view in a particular way and be totally integrated with the open space and, and the fabric of the, of the city. And they are actually stated in legal terms, in legal terms. And simply by planting the right of way, understanding the right of way, acknowledging the right of way as a living place of its own character, the public realm, it is possible then, by subdividing also the blocks, to arrive at a way of occupying this place through a series of objects that can, that can generate a particularly powerful sense of, of, uh, of, of, of a settlement at the scale of a neighborhood. This is done, incidentally, as I will show you in, in, in a moment, through the public process. These are, all These are projects for municipalities in this case. So you could approach a municipality, take a dead piece of land, and make a proposal and go after it. There's a type of project for you. The second project is, is a more fascinating one. Our office won this year the, the, the United States federal um, uh, award for this project, I, I should say for this insignificant project, because it was so transformative to a, to a marginal community. This was for the, for the Environmental uh, Protection Agency of the United States. This is a six-lane uh, road going through a, a, a terrible suburban uh, setting in northern Los Angeles. And our project was, working with the municipality and, and, the, and the residents of this town, to give this place a there, which has not had, has not had a there there for, for 100 years. So, I, so this, this is an indication of charrette drawings, a potential section, as you can see, uh, taking, making a median, making a rambla in the median, and, 
and then allowing only one lane of cars on either side, and then uh, promoting the public realm of this place. And then a series of drawings indicating how this would function as parking in the middle, in, in the middle how it would function as, a, as, a, as partly parking and partly as, as a farmer's market, and how it would function on the 4th of July in a parade. So you can see the idea that, that you can take a mindless piece of highway and turn it, uh, goes through a town or a village, and turn it into, it turn into, its, into its main spatial asset and its, its identity. How do we know it has an identity? Not because we won an award, but because in one year that it went from here to here, in the one year of its construction, it has attracted 800 units of housing, two public, two public new buildings, it has attracted $180 million of private investment, and it had the first Christmas celebration there in 100 years in this town. Because there was no Plaza Mayor in this, in this village. So there we go. How do you intervene? You can intervene by, by a, a, having a sense of the whole, or you can intervene by the coherent pieces of this theory that you understand and executing them in small, in small parts. The third project is even, even more tragic. The third project is, is, is an indication of a crime that occurred in the United States when in the 50s and 60s, 320, I'm going to talk about the crimes today following as well, 320 main streets were closed down to traffic by Victor Gruen mostly, one, one urbanist. This is Fresno in Central California. I, it is not a particularly pretty place, but it's a living place. It's really the center of life for this city of 500,000 people. And this is, this is what it looks like today. This is what it looks like today. It is dead. It was done by a very famous landscape architect who put little pots and things there. It's a national landmark because this architect was very important. And it's clinically dead. This is the only city in California that does not have a downtown because it does not have a place where it's the, the, the density of its old buildings and the nature of the central uses cannot be, cannot be had. So this is a simple process of charretting that shows how something like this can be opened up. You guys are good at computers. You can draw by hand, or you can draw by computers at an appropriate point. These are transformational drawings in computer that show a five-year five transformation and a 10-year transformation, including transit in the street. So you can bring all of the, trans all of the, of the, of the suburban energy of, this, of the city into its downtown again. Linear commercial streets are, the, are, are really uh, the economy of, of, of many places and you want to concentrate the, 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 the traffic and, and on, this, on this economy, both transit and traffic. Turning, turning the subject over to, to, to the other set of, of, interesting, of, of interesting potential projects, one of the greatest distinctions of the new urbanism is that it's not, it's not a, some kind of a mafia with, with, with uh, you know, some headquarters someplace, people making plans on behalf of others. It's really a, a kind of brotherhood and sisterhood of people that share their knowledge across the board and, and collaborate to, to the maximum degree, uh, movingly and uh, across all kinds of, of, of possible boundaries uh, and do projects together and particularly share theories. Uh, this is a very important piece of theory developed by, by Duane Plate Zyberg that you, many of you may know. And the reason it was very important, the reason I mention it, is because in understanding the nature, <coughs> the nature of blocks, excuse me, one needs to understand the fact that there is a potential in, 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 a, in, a, in a given architectural setting, in a particular, ur particular urban setting, to vary the intensity uh, of, of how these blocks are, are delivered, whether they're uniform or not, whether they are um, of high intensity, medium intensity, or low intensity. I feel embarrassed telling you those things, because all you have to do is take Google Earth and look at Madrid, and, and the city is organized, traditional Madrid is organized that way. So you don't have to go very far. I'll return to this issue in a moment. But this diagram done about 15 years ago basically says that there's at least six and probably many more ways of uh, understanding how one builds a world based on the intensity, from pure conservation to pure metropolitan structure left to right, with all kinds of in intermediate um, uh, moments. Of, when I say intensity, I mean integrating the, the, the environmental components that I spoke about before. And of course, the only reason why this is important is because we only have two ways of, of building today. We build slaburbia and suburbia. And, and here we have, we have a, a range of potential expression that's truly extraordinary. 
Uh, and, and we also have, through, through coding, a magnificent simple instrument that legally says, and this is, comes from a code of one of our projects, that legally says that if you have a, a piece of land that is larger than, than uh, two acres, uh, you, have to, you have to subdivide it into smaller pieces by the introduction of streets and, 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 of, uh, and, of, uh, and of alleys. You have to form lots, and then you have to actually introduce lots on each lot, a variety of choices of types, and then you can introduce by design individual types. And it's a very simple recipe, the simplest possible recipe for achieving the breaking down of the building, of the building fabric to the scale that you want. This, in this city, it might be two acres. In the next city, it might be three acres. Leon, who loves to do you know, one and two block uh, um, towns, it could be one building, two buildings, or three buildings. So it could be minuscule. Portland, uh, Oregon, has 200 by 200 foot blocks, 70 by 70 meter blocks. New York is about 200 feet by 700 feet, 250, I think, by 710. The Imperial Spanish block is 100 meters by 100 meters, 300 by 300. So you can see that the potential for generating regular and irregular grids through this medium is fantastic. And of course, it breaks down, it makes disappear the scourge of the, of the modernist mega block. And so it is important then to think that as architects within an urbanist setting, we can intervene and do projects that, that matter immensely in changing the nature of, 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 our, of, our, of our individual production and the quality of the places where, where, where we're building. And I'm making the point here, which is very important, sometimes this can be done with one building. You could be an extraordinary architect and urbanist by designing one building in the right place in the right form. And this is, this is a project in, in, in uh, Los Angeles that our office did, revitalizing a typology that had not been built in 70 years, which is courtyard housing of the kind that you have in, in, in Andalusia, in Sevilla, that comes, the Corrales and, 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 and the Vecidades, that has come to, to Southern California through, through, through the colonies and, and up the Camino Real. And it was built in Los Angeles until 1930. We found this type, we, we, we reinterpreted it within, within the, the building codes existent. We incorporated parking into it because I think it's, it's an aspect of its of its, uh, of its um, uh, current kind of life. We placed it in the body of the city in a way that does not violate the city. It's not a monument. It is actually completely, completely integrated into the buildings around it, some of them which are good and some are not. Here's, here's the project, actually, balance between solid and void. And we, we, we put it in place in a way that it does, it does honor to its setting, and it also is an object <laughs> in itself, with some very few intelligent decisions. Parking at the lowest point, parking court in, in the front, and then in the context of, of our climate, at some, some time in the future I'd like to talk to you about the climatic dimensions of architecture, which is a whole other subject, but in hot, dry climates like this, which you have plenty in Spain, traditional architecture does not enclose circulation space just keeps it entirely open. There's no reason to enclose circulation space. And this gives a distinction to architecture that is shocking. Because you don't make buildings that are tight, you know, and, and, and refrigerated, but you make buildings that are ample and, and have a public grace and, and an openness of shared space that is remarkable. Hmm? Yeah, and then I will in a second, because I, I have new numbers on the cost that will surprise you too, Leon. And, and this is the, this is the, the view of the of this one of the three courtyards from one side and the very iconic view from the other side with a fireplace outside coming from the early days of Hollywood when people didn't have where to go in, in Los Angeles, so they met in their courtyards. So this comes through. Of course, I was part of a, of a team that wrote a book on courtyard housing in Los Angeles in 1977, which is still in, in print, and which basically makes the argument that the only way to make a world is to understand the world. So you have to go out there and, and interpret it with your eyes and your hands and, and your camera and so on. So this building was built in 19, in, in 19, uh, 11 years ago, whenever that was, uh, in, in uh, 2002, for $120 a square foot, which I think in meters is 100 and uh, 12, 1200, 12, 12, is it 1200? Yeah. And 
Basically, it costs $3 million for the building and $2 million for the land. It is for sale for $25 million. It's for sale right now if anybody wants to buy it or any unit in it. And there are units in this building that are 60 meters, 80 meters, 120 meters in that territory. Why? Why is it selling with this amount of money? I mean, this is serious because we are not in the business of, 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 of making buildings for the hyper wealthy. Why? And this is not a neighborhood for the hyper wealthy. The reason is that the quality of life inside a place like this and the quality of life inside the units in a place like this are so extravagant that people buy these things the way they, you know, they bid up their edificatoria when you go to bookfinder.com, you know? They see something, they want it, they like it, they bid it up. Anything that's value in the world gets bid up. Nobody's building, uh, bidding zen, right, uh, Ettore? <laughs> right. So the second, the second thing I want to talk to you about is a project which is another kind of intervention that for us resolved the following, the following uh, puzzle. How come every modernist building intervention in a Western city, American or European, when it gets put down, just becomes an eyesore. Why, why do these buildings destroy the place in which they're built? Whether it's Cabrini, uh, the Cabrini homes in Chicago or, or the, Williams, uh, the Williamstown buildings in New York or any, any, any European, East and West European or Chinese building of this kind. Uh, a very small site, as you can see, um, one and a half acres approximately on a train station. And this, is, this actually is a magical moment, and I think this is a small magical moment. I mean, yesterday you saw some very big magical moments. This is a teeny one, but sometimes a teeny magical moment can solve a puzzle that 4,000 architects working about a century have not, have not resolved. And the problem is this. When you actually move with fervor, with Siam fervor into a city, and you say, this is this piece of New York, and we're going to build here with eight times the density. Somebody says, well, it's going to be 100 dwellings per acre, you know, 300 dwellings per hectare, whatever it is, right? What people do is they take this number, they, in, in, a, in a mechanical set of mind, they make a building at that density, a single building at that density, and they go, bing, 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 right? And not only is the space between these buildings residual, there is no, there is no transition to, to the city around it, so they always stand out as being mushrooms of a different genus, you know? They don't belong in that forest. So the alternative to this, the alternative to this is what we call not average density, but hybrid density. And hybrid density is taking the same number of units that are allowed and putting them into place in different types in such a way so that you end up not only making internal space that matters, but make urban space that matters. It's such a ridiculously er simple idea, but you have to believe in typology. You have to believe in public space. You have to believe in the integration of, of infrastructure into buildings. You have to believe in buildings having an urban dimension, because if you don't believe in this, it's easy then to conceive something in, in Rio and airdrop it in Madrid. And, and this, is the, this is the simplicity of this diagram. The blue is 100 dwellings per acre. The, the, um, the orange is the normative 40, the front is actually 20, and there is four single-family houses. It's also an extraordinary economic uh, diagram because the houses sold for a million dollars each and the lofts for 500,000. So you have a range within a project. So this is what the project looks like. The train comes through, the lofts in, in one corner, the first industrial lofts to be, built, to be built in Los Angeles in probably 70 years also. Right? And then going from, from in transact terms for, from the, the, the zone which is uh, commercial on one end, on, on towards the neighborhood, and then the interior of the block. The interior of these courtyard buildings always broken down at the multiple house scale. Instead of having this incredibly narrow point of view of, of modernists that every expression of every building needs to reflect the single unit or the bathroom window, you need to think of massing as having something to do with the street it is on. And the best, the best advice would be that you actually begin to think of multiple unit expression in terms of massing. And then, and then the, 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 the thing in its context with the building in the front from the 1880s. So you can see that, that this strategy is about conservation, is about preservation, is about space making and place making. It does not prejudice itself in terms of me better than you, 
now or better than then. It is really a place-making and a place-based idea and not a time-based idea, or at least not an exclusively time-based idea. And this is my last project that I want to show you. And this speaks to the, to, to the possibility of not doing a single object or a small urban site, but you know, going to a, a town or a city or a neighborhood and saying, here's a, here's a neighborhood scale piece. We can actually do something here of another kind. This is a project in the Arizona desert um, uh, that, that, is, uh, that, was about, uh, that is about uh, uh, 10 years old now. And uh, this is where a, a major crime was committed uh, circa 1967, as you can see, we have sequential crimes in this country. Through so-called urban renewal after the war, which was a federal program, we destroyed 125 city centers in the United States. Sold the land to private developers with the explicit, with the explicit instruction that they build modernist cities. And this is, this is a major crime because this is a, a, Hispanic, a Hispanic town, Tucson, in Arizona, near the border, where this was one of the most complete ensembles of adobe buildings in the United States. It was more distinguished than, um, than Santa Fe, that some of you may know. And it was torn down in 1961. 350 houses were torn down. This is the neighborhood uh, in uh, 1880. In by 1920, the main street had, had more uh, uh, dense types, uh, Anglo-American types. This is the, the place in 1961. It was just erased. Like It had three plazas, by the way. And this is how it was rebuilt. This, these, are, these are historically accurate figure fields. So we got a piece of land on the other side of the river. We didn't work within the same area because we wanted to also make the point that that, you know, that should remain as, a, as an eyesore and that should continue to be a, a, a disinvested place. And on the other side of the river, we made a very simple plan whose sort of slight broken glass grid reflects the, the, uh, the Indian uh, acequias, the water courses, the river is about here somewhere. So the pattern of this, of this, of this project reflects that. There is a main avenue with, with a mercado, uh, mixed-use buildings on the side, and then simple courtyard houses, one after the other. This is a very important thing for you to know. This project, this portion of the project, right here approximately, I'll show you the square. This project, about 25, 30 houses, were built during the recession of the last six years, which actually in Arizona, because it's not in the U.S., it's sort of between the U.S. and Mexico in terms of economy, was a complete depression. And even in that economy, in that economy, it was possible to build this project out. This is a, a, a charrette project, uh, drawing of the, of the main street. There is a tram that is now coming to this place. This is the Mercado on the right, which is like the, your, your Spanish Mercados, inspired from these Mercados, actually. Um, and these are the neighborhoods around, around a, a, a public garden, mostly adobe buildings, a typical street in the vernacular, in the, in the imagined vernacular of this place, and a reminder that all of these things happen, all that I showed you, and all that new urbanists do happen in public charrettes, with some of the qualifications that we talked about yesterday. And public charrettes have a number of, 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 of events. This is, a, this is a presentation with people milling around. This actually is an instruction and an exchange of ideas at night during the charrette. These are consultant technical meetings because there's the all, colleagues of all stripes are working together to integrate the work. And this is just the old fashioned grind into the, mid, into the night. So that all of these things happen magically during this kind of seven days. I want you to see this because as professionals you would, you would appreciate them. And this is the, f the, this is the project in the way in which it appears. These are all houses that are making a small, a small square. They're built either out of adobe or out of block, so they have a certain kind of, of constructional integrity. They're built and designed by local builders, five of them. The only thing I did, which actually was a stroke of genius, is that they were doing buildings that were, that were stepping back, and I persuaded them to, to tip the walls up and make these empty rooms in the front which in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, the, the, the uh, climate of the desert are completely delicious because in the summer at the top you can be under the sky and in the winter on the ground behind this, uh, this facade you can have a fireplace and, and be heated and be outdoors, which is really quite, quite remarkable. And there are, hmm? pardon me? Well, they, they wanted to build them this way and, and just by, by connecting with the frontal wall, by making a wall to the street, you generate an outdoors place. Now you can see them. This is, there's outdoors up here. There's, there's outdoors back here too. 
and, and it continues into, into a walled garden. So all of the language of placemaking of the desert, and you know, the desert here comes to be maybe 45 degrees in the summer, 46 maybe. It's very hot, very, very hot. And, and this, is, this is a typical wall. And then, and then the, the, the constructed elements as builders are building. These are, this is a small group of people who are actually are inspired by, by the Mexican towns of the border and are building these building this buildings in these, in these simple uh, vernaculars of the, of the desert. Very poetic, very beautiful, very beautiful work. And then, and then the second generation of buildings uh, that, that also look at the way in which local, local examples were built of the ones that were erased that again, very much work with, with, with the wall technologies. You can notice, notice the, the stone foundation, which has to do with the fact that the adobe doesn't get hit by, uh, by the water. The, the, the great trumpet, the, the, the trumpet uh, uh, spouts at the top to push the water out over the sidewalk and so on, not to hit the building and so on. Deep windows, deep walls, all the kinds of things that you can see. And these are all, all buildings built, being built as part of this, of this project. These are brand new buildings built, built as part of this project. And an economy that is, that, is, that is not particularly distinguished. And this is the beginning of, uh, this is a beautiful project of row houses that are, face, that are facing inwards. Only two have been built and, 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 and many more are coming. And the last project I want to show you, uh, crossing Leon for sure, uh, is, is at the metropolitan, uh, the metropolitan scale because I think that kind of project uh, is, is, is one that, that is also very important. I admire the Ensanches of Spain more than any other part, I think, of, 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 of your architectural culture, of, of your urbanist culture, because I see in it a, an accomplishment that is a, an obvious solution that could take care of all the ills of the last 60, 80 years. It's industrial building at a large scale, tremendous repetition, uh, a, a fine degree of detail in a very limited place, and magnificent placemaking at a, at a denser scale. And one of the great lessons that I derived from Barcelona when I realized this, this was happening is you have, you have a city which is made out of two typologies alone, the, the, the Chaflan typology and the, and, the, and the Entre Medianeras typology, two types that make an entire city of 300 blocks. I mean, that is an intellectual accomplishment of a remarkable kind. Different, of course, than, 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 than the, the, the the, the kinds of, of cities that, of different kinds of cities that we admire, but nonetheless, very important. So this is a pro for a project in Russia working, working for another urbanist, because it's another thing that happens in our professions. We end up working for each other and, 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 and in a sense, taking significant direction for others as colleagues. Uh, protagonism is not of the complete essence. So this is a case of, of, a, of a single block of, 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 of lower rise, a mixed block of three densities, and, 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 if, and, and another one of even higher density, and the capacity of these to actually make cities of a certain kind, where actually you can see the, the, the density concentrated on the, on the Central Park, not unlike New York, and then cities of, of, of minor intensity and of major intensity. This is a one-day exercise. Let me repeat. This is a one-day exercise. So there is enormous power in these tools once you understand them and you can carry them out. I'm going to finish. With, with, with one exhortation, and that is you can, you can think of this as being, as being a, a religious conversion. You might want to go out there and have the Holy Spirit hit you in the head. You might want to spend three weeks with Leon or anyone else in this room to, to, to get inspired. But let me tell you where this starts. It's very, very simple. It is very simple. Every one of us has had a moment of awakening. We didn't get to where we are without at some point saying, oh my God, I was actually nine years old, nine years old. I lived in Athens in a place, in a house, in a building, like the buildings of Joran Sanchez. And I went to an American school, and on Saturdays, I didn't have class where all my friends in the neighborhood had class, went to Greek schools. So I was standing on the second floor of my house, watching the house of my piano teacher being demolished, a neoclassical house. And the rooms that I knew and the elements that I knew, just like, like, like somebody being buried, you know, slowly from head down, like this. And then for the next year, I watched a cement building come up and replace this building. I was nine years old, and I said to myself, these people are completely mad. These people are just completely mad. So I'm suggesting the following. We had magnificent lunch, three colleagues, the other day, at the Plaza de la Paja. Go to the Plaza de la Paja as architects, have lunch with your friends, look at that space, look at the monuments, look at the buildings, and ask yourselves, would you ever do another kind of place? 
in your lives as professionals, would you ever do another, another, another uh, kind of, of object that violates the sense of space? This is your culture, this is your life, this is what you like. You don't have to be 40 years old before you decide you're going to do this. You can say at 25, this is my life, I'm going to do it. That's as simple as it is. And at that point, you abandon all authority or sense of authority and return to common sense, which after all is both authority and humanity and democracy combined. Thank you.